Hi, Manu Veer. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome to the show. Uh, hi, it's a pleasure to be on with you. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm looking forward to the session. And uh, do you want me to just share my, my presentation now? Maybe you can first do a short introduction about yourself. Yeah, uh, my name is Manuveer Das. I work at NVIDIA. Uh, I'm responsible for enterprise computing at NVIDIA. As you know, we're huge believers in AI. We've done a lot of work in AI, and we now see this, uh, this phase of the journey where enterprise companies are really beginning to adopt AI quite heavily. And we need the developers in the community to really help enterprise companies uh, make their companies better through the use of AI. So I think it's a fantastic uh, moment to be having this conversation. Yes, totally agree with that. So you're going to talk about the developer essentials for a new era of AI. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm absolutely ready for it. So okay. uh, maybe I should share my presentation. It'll, yes, it'll, the floor is let yours. Let me take one second to get organized and then... Yeah. Uh, Where are you located? Over here? I'm in uh, Seattle, Washington. Okay, right. In fact, I worked at Microsoft for many years, for 15 years. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was part of the, the developer team, you know, working on Visual Studio and things like that. So uh, I've been born and raised as a developer myself. <laughs> and I, and I, you know, and I love the, uh, what developers do every day, you know, the creativity, because yeah. uh, nobody can, no one entity can have all the ideas. So you want to build a platform so that developers everywhere can just uh, do great work with their ideas but not have to repeat the same work that is common, you know? So you build a platform with common tools and then developers just uh, build on top of that. I think that's okay. a great philosophy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, so I'm gonna try to share this now and do let me know if you're able to... Um, yeah, it's going through. Yes. See that? And I'm just gonna put it into slideshow mode. Show it. That's not happening. So, um, when I see the NVIDIA logo, I always think about gaming. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, so you can see my title slide now, right? See it. Are you Are you able to see my title slide? Yes, we can see it. Great. Okay. Yeah. So as you said, the, the, the title of the presentation is Developer Essentials. And, and what I really want to convey to, to the audience today is uh, what we have been doing in NVIDIA to really help developers uh, quickly, uh, quickly contribute to this amazing area of, of AI. Okay. So I want to start with just uh, for the one or two people in the audience who might not believe it yet, this is a massive opportunity for all of us. Just one study by McKinsey, for example, talks about a trillion dollars of incremental uh, business opportunity through AI. I think uh, if you just look at the statistics um, of late, uh, you know, there's 96% of enterprise companies have some AI project at some pilot stage. So I would say on the one hand, we're in this journey where companies are really beginning to understand that they, they, they ought to embrace AI but many of them are very, very early in their journey and they don't yet have the right uh, applications and the right tools to do uh, to get benefit for their use cases. So it's a, a fantastic time really to be uh, to be a developer. Uh, you know, the way the way we we describe it sometimes uh, from NVIDIA is this is like the smartphone moment for AI where. Uh, there's so many different use cases and creative people can think about the different use cases uh, and build AI solutions for them. And our role at NVIDIA is really to try to provide that smartphone, you know, that is a platform that people can use. Um, and of course, you heard from Eric and the great work that's happening at Microsoft. There's a number of, of companies. So this is, this is clearly something that we are part of, that we participate in from NVIDIA. Uh, but as well, so many others do as well. And we just try to make our own contributions. And so what I wanted to share a little bit today was the ways in which we at NVIDIA are trying to make uh, our contribution in conjunction with, with Microsoft and Google and, and Amazon and uh, just so many uh, uh, providers out there, okay? Um, so just a few facts, just to get everybody caught up on 
uh, who we are and what we do for AI because you know it's it's easy to think of Nvidia as the gaming company or the graphics company. I think a long time ago, uh, a decade ago, uh, at least we realized that uh, the same acceleration technology that we have in our graphics card turns out to be the perfect acceleration technology for deep learning, which of course is the uh, is a fundamental part of of AI. And so that's when we embarked on this journey of accelerating AI. And what we saw were dramatic accelerations, right? 10x, 20x, 100x, a few hundred x times acceleration, which really made those algorithms uh, tractable uh, for the first time. And so since then, just some stats for you, you know, we have more than a billion GPUs uh, out uh, in the field. Uh, we have our SDK called CUDA, which is our lower level uh, uh, interface for programming uh, against a GPU. Uh, I'm sure many of you in the audience are familiar. We've had you know, a lot of downloads, as you can see, thousands of applications developed. Uh, the thing that we're most proud of is we have 3.5 million developers registered who work with our stack in various different ways. Um, and that's really the main thing because that's how um, you know everybody in the community can can benefit from the work we do. So, um, so I thought I'd put that slide up there just to give you an idea. Um, I thought I would share three ways of thinking about uh, our contribution. The first, of course, is the accelerated the GPU. And as you know, we've taken the approach that we have an interface called CUDA. And as we move from one generation of GPU to the next, or from uh, one kind of GPU to another one, even in the same generation, we have one API, which is called CUDA. And so what that does is it makes sure that as a developer, when you program against a part of our, our API for some functionality, then it's the same code that you can have, regardless of which GPU you use. And then when we move from one generation of GPU to next, your code carries forward, right? So that's very important to NVIDIA's approach. Um, uh, and of course, I think it's very important for developers. So clearly we have accelerators that make AI go faster. And we, you know, as you know, we participate in MLPERF and these things, and, and we, we are number one on that regard with on all the benchmarks. Uh, we are a full stack company. I think there was a person uh, uh, who said a long time ago that people who really care about software do their own hardware. And uh, at NVIDIA, we do the full stack. So we design the GPUs, we design the systems, how GPUs are connected together, how they're connected to the CPU, what the interconnects look like, uh, how much memory you have on board with the GPU on the device. So we think about that whole architecture and then we go up from there. So anytime you're working on a particular um, uh, work workload, uh, uh, for example, large language models, we do all the software algorithmics to do the training for large language models, but we're also very aware of what the bottlenecks in the hardware can be, and then we design the hardware uh, accordingly. And as we evolve our GPUs, for example, we put in different kinds of um, operators into the GPU to enable more efficient processing of uh, of some of those algorithms. So we are very much a full stack company, and we do the uh, we optimize across the full stack. And then finally, uh, we run a lot of software. Nvidia today has is much more a software company than a hardware company. Uh, we have thousands upon thousands of software engineers. We have more software engineers than hardware engineers by far. And we've developed a huge number of SDKs, and we make them all available. Um, and you know, many of them are, of course, uh, available on GitHub, and so they're pretty easy to find over there. And we work with the community on these. And I'll go through these uh, SDKs a lot more. But but so this is one slide to say here's the the three ways you can think of us and our contribution. At the base of it, we build these hardware accelerators that anybody can use to really dramatically. Uh, speed up these workflows uh, so that they become practical. Uh, the second part of this is we optimize across the full stack, and then we make all the software available to the community uh, to use and to build upon. Okay. I think um, a, a good a good point to make here is that there's been 
you know, an interesting inflection going on uh, that many of us are aware of, which is that more and more of the workloads are in the public clouds now. And that movement is just going to continue, right? And, and as uh, some of the companies that you're familiar with have done an amazing job building this cloud infrastructure, right? And so there's good reasons why uh, the world is moving to the clouds. Uh, now, the reason I bring this up is because uh, NVIDIA is the accelerated computing company. That's what we do with our hardware and software. And there's two ways of thinking about why accelerated computing matters and why as a developer, building an application or some kind of platform, why you should care about accelerated computing. Uh, the old reason was that when you accelerate your application, it runs faster, you get results faster, you can process a bigger workload and all of that, and that provides value to your ultimate user or customer, right? Uh, but now there's a second value of accelerated computing which becomes crucial, which is that it saves money. And the reason it saves money is if the same workload can be run on a fewer number of servers over a lesser period of time, then even if the, the cost per server is a little bit higher, the overall cost of running the workload is much, much lower. Now, when you're sitting there running your workload on premises or running your application on premises, uh, you've already got the infrastructure, the non-accelerated infrastructure in your building. And so, Yes, I can come to you and say, hey, here's this other infrastructure with acceleration in it. And if you run over there, you, you, you'll go, uh, you'll save money. But at the end of the day, you have to procure the new, the new equipment. On the other hand, think about what happens in the cloud. When you run something in the cloud, you're renting instances. You're renting them by the hour, by the minute. So as a developer, if you have built an application or a workflow in the cloud and you choose to integrate uh, with acceleration to make your workflow go faster, you're going to immediately save your customer money because they're going to have to rent fewer instances for less amount of time. And again, even if the rental cost per instance is higher, the overall cost is going to be much, much lower. So I think that's a, that's an important thing to, uh, to keep in mind and consider. Okay, so um, this body of software that, that we've been working on for years now in NVIDIA, uh, we think of it as two levels. Okay, one is we have a plethora of SDKs that are like building blocks and tools that a developer can use to do their own work. For example, we have uh, GPU accelerated TensorFlow and PyTorch, and you can use that, uh, you know, if you're doing some uh, some deep learning for part of your uh, workflow. And I'll talk about more examples. Uh, and we've had that for a few years, and uh, you know they've been quite widely used. But in the last couple of years, we've really put a focus on what we call workflows that are higher level pieces of software. As you all know, any AI use case involves multiple steps. It's not just one piece of code, right? You have to process the data, you have to do some training, uh, then you do some tuning, you do inference. There's many steps involved. And so we've built a whole set of um, libraries, if you will now, that are for these end-to-end -end workflows. Uh, uh, and I'll, I'll be sharing that list with you and, and talking about that a little bit more. So I think there's two ways to engage with the software of NVIDIA. One is at the level of picking up the lower level tools and doing your own end-to-end -end workflows on top of that. And then the other is just to adopt one of our workflows and, and build upon that. Use that as a starting point, a reference uh, design, if you will, and then either extend it or modify it or integrate it into what, you, what you've got. So two ways to develop. Okay, um, again, we know that um, AI is essentially a four-step uh, process where you have your, you find your data, you, you prepare your data. Uh, that can be quite a time-consuming process. Uh, and then you do your training, uh, whether it's deep learning or simpler forms of machine learning. Uh, and then you do some level of tuning, optimization, and then finally you deploy uh, for your inference. So uh, at that lower layer of tools, we've got a number of tools that make this uh, make this feasible. Uh, we built something called NVIDIA Rapids. It's open source at uh, rapids.io. And it's basically uh, the data science constructs you're familiar with, like pandas, uh, that we have built versions of these that are accelerated on GPUs, and they are dramatically faster. You know, uh, on benchmarks, you'll see 
20 times the performance, 25 times the performance. Uh, if you target these, uh, uh, your data processing to GPUs, uh, we're all developers here. It's not, it's not a free process. We match the APIs, but it's not a, you know, uh, flip a switch and it just works. There's some amount of retargeting that one has to do. But if you do that retargeting, as I said, you can, you get orders of magnitude uh, benefit. The other approach we've taken along the way is we've also taken Spark, which is very commonly used for data processing. And we've used the same Rapids libraries to accelerate Spark. Now that one we've done completely transparently. You literally flip a switch, you don't change anything else. And some of your operators run on GPUs instead of CPUs. Uh, you get lesser performance benefit. Instead of order of magnitude performance benefit, you'll get several times performance benefit. Um, and again, it just saves money because uh, on a TCO level for the user, but it's completely transparent, right? So two ways to go to improve your data processing. Uh, either you adopt Rapids and do the retargeting from Pandas, et cetera, to Rapids. There's a little bit of retargeting you have to do and you can get dramatic acceleration. Or you, you just uh, use your Spark uh, pipeline and you just flip a switch and, um, you, know, and you get uh, instant benefit with, uh, with no code changes at all, right? Uh, so that's, uh, that's Rapids. Um, and then for the training, we've got PyTorch and TensorFlow uh, targeted to GPUs. Uh, and we constantly uh, optimize that. We've got uh, something called Tau. Tau is basically for your retraining loop. You know, you've got some, you've you've trained a model already. You've got a pre-trained model. Now you want to add some data uh, that you have or a different context, and you want to retrain. So Tau is a toolkit that that enables that loop, if you will. Um, you know, for a long time there was a belief that you do your training on GPUs and you do your inference on CPUs. Um, and what we realized a few years ago that actually uh, the GPU accelerator is an awesome place to do inference. So we built a runtime contents RT. And then on top of that, we built uh, a library called Triton, which is basically an inference server for, for model serving. Um, and it's, uh, it's very, very performant uh, relative to CPUs. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of advantage both, both again in TCO in terms of how much uh, hardware you need uh, to use. And also, especially when you're in real time use cases, uh, then you get much faster uh, result. Uh, so you can do interactive kind of things. So that's NVIDIA Triton. So that's a glimpse of what we have in the lower layer, uh, if you will. And then the other way to go is at the, at the upper level, as I said, where we have more complete sort of workloads for particular use cases. So I'm showing this to you here and I've broken it down uh, by area. So, so the way to understand this is basically um, each of these frameworks that we built is for a particular domain that I've, I've put in parentheses under the name of the framework. And then at the top of the slide, I've given examples of use cases that one can use. So for any of these frameworks in its domain, it enables a plethora of use cases and then as a developer, what I can do is I can take one of these frameworks and I can add whatever else I need to add to complete the use case. So uh, uh, as you all know, a very, very common application of AI is video analytics, you know, out on the edge, uh, in factories, et cetera. We have a framework called Metropolis uh, that provides all the common functionality uh, for video analytics. Um, and then you can use it for a variety of use cases. And I've given you uh, one example there uh, with traffic, right? Um, we have a framework for uh, conversational AI. It's, uh, it's called Nemo. Uh, and uh, that's where we do a lot of work on, on large language models. Um, and, um, you know, and so you can imagine use cases like, like chatbots or for employees at a company. Uh, accessing a knowledge base uh, and such. Uh, we've got a very interesting framework called Morpheus for cybersecurity. Uh, every company cares about cybersecurity now, you know, and for developers, I would say, uh, you know, there are obviously large companies focused on cybersecurity that build, uh, you know, big products that, that cover a range of things. But interestingly now, as a developer, you can quickly build 
uh, particular solutions for particular aspects of cybersecurity that companies uh, find valuable. And I'll give you one example from NVIDIA. You know, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA's corporate network was actually compromised uh, in February of this year. Uh, we were attacked. And, and what we realized was that we have so many employees logging in and using different systems. And uh, well, one of our employees had been impersonated. And then that way they got access to our network and, and extracted some amount of information before we found that and we blocked that. So uh, we built an AI framework uh, uh, called Morpheus. And we did this use case uh, called digital fingerprinting, where basically we gather all the logs from Acta, Azure Active Directory, from Duo standard systems that we use uh, in our company. And we feed this uh, to, to our AI engine in Morpheus. And basically what it's doing is it's creating uh, an individual model of every uh, employee in the company in terms of what their regular pattern of behavior is. Do they go to the travel website? Do they go to the expense reporting website? You know, what do they do in a normal day uh, of their life? You build a sort of a model of each employee. And then against that model, the system observes the actual uh, interactions of the employee. And so as you can imagine, it can flag when, when it sees abnormal behavior, right? It's like anomaly detection with AI. And we use this system every day at NVIDIA, right? And it's one of these point use cases. So any of you can pick up uh, this uh, framework we built for cybersecurity called Morpheus and go develop use cases like that, whether it's digital fingerprinting or anything else uh, you want to do. Reva is our framework for, for speech AI, for ASR, which is audio uh, to text, for you know uh, text to speech, TTS, and it can be used in chatbots and lots of different contexts. Uh, trading for transcription, for example, for, for banks and financial companies that have saved all the audio recordings of the interactions. And then if you convert it to text, obviously um, that makes it easier to, uh, to process. So that's called Riva for speech AI. Merlin is our recommender system framework. As you know, recommender systems are what drive the, the internet today. It's all about personalization and showing people what to watch next, what to read next. Um, and so that's uh, that's a framework for that. Um, modulus is we model actual physics and do very accurate simulation of physics. And then finally, co-opt is it's basically solving the traveling salesman problem, uh, but on GPUs, so much more powerful with certain heuristics so that these problems become uh, tractable. Okay, so uh, these this is a quick rundown of our, of our workflows. So the final point I wanted to make was that um, we we love the 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 choice that customers and developers have in front of them today, which is uh, there are public clouds. Uh, obviously, we've got we've got uh, you know Azure um, as a great example. You just heard from Eric, but we've got all the public clouds, and and then you've got other providers in different regions that also provide shared infrastructure. You've got people running on premises. You've got co-location areas like Equilix, et cetera. So customers can really vote with their feet as to where they want to run a particular workflow. And what we have chosen to do at NVIDIA is we're an open platform company. We're agnostic. We build everything uh, so that it can run everywhere, right? We love containers. We, we put everything into containers so that you know you can do Helm charts and run things on Kubernetes. Um, we avoid taking dependencies on particular things that are only found in, in, in one environment versus the other. And that allows us to be quite portable, right? So those, those frameworks and things I was showing you earlier, they, uh, they run uh, uh, anywhere. So uh, the easy way to interact with us is uh, to join our developer program. It's developer.nvidia.com. Uh, as I said, our stuff is available everywhere. If you go to a NGC, this is the repository where we make everything available. It's all free. Uh, it's all containerized. A lot of our code is also on GitHub. So you can either just go to GitHub and pick up our code and you know do the usual thing of playing with it, or you can go pick up our the same stuff, but it's uh, packaged into containers, so it's very easy uh, easy to deploy. And then uh, the thing that I'm really excited for all of you that we focused on a lot in the last year is we built this experience called Launchpad that any of you can sign up for where we've spun up infrastructure, uh, um, you know, a, a lot of infrastructure and these workflows and things that I showed you, they're all available there. 
So if you sign up, you can try out these different workflows and you can do your own development uh, and make very rapid progress. And the experts that we have at NVIDIA, the data scientists, the engineers who develop these workflows, et cetera, they can work with you very closely to help you um, as you develop your application. So I think that's a great uh, starting place, which is just uh, NVIDIA.com launch. So three things to, to remember, developer.nvidia.com, uh, which is the way to connect it with, with us and find everything we've got. NGC is our repository where you can easily pick up uh, all these things in, in containers. And then Launchpad is this sort of free experience where you can uh, try everything out. So really super excited to have uh, been able to, to share this uh, with you all. Uh, you know, it's a very exciting time uh, for AI and um, you know, looking forward to uh, working with all of you going forward. Anuvir, thank you very much. And very good to see that NVIDIA is really um putting a lot of effort in, in AI. I was a bit surprised to see that all those models are already pre-built by, uh, by NVIDIA. That's right, uh, that, that's, that's right. right. You know, I'm, I, 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 you know, I had the schematic, I realized that talked about the SDKs and the frameworks, but in the process of building these frameworks, of course, we've done a lot of training ourselves on the infrastructure we have. So we have a lot of pre-trained models that are also available uh, at NGC. So for a developer, you can pick up the code that we've built and build your own solutions on top of that. But you can also pick up the pre-trained models that we've created and you can start from there. So you don't have to start all your training uh, from the beginning. Yeah, I'm definitely going to sign up for your developer program uh, after That's this uh, this evening. That's Thank lovely. you need to <laughs> advertise it a little bit more because I, I, I also had never heard about it. So I think it's something that the I community know, needs I to know. more That's about. great feedback. So, so firstly, so I really ap appreciate the opportunity then because at least I was able to share that with your audience. But yeah, your, your point is well taken. We're really going to focus much more on, on sharing this with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Because at the end, it makes sense that eh? you make the hardware and you to build, to have the hardware, you also need to have something that's, uh, how do I need to say it, who can interact with the hardware to try it out and to, to build extra services as well for your own organization. And you get you build out some research. Yeah. And if you can share that research, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the because the experience we had was that uh, as we got into AI, we got into all these new use cases that nobody had really done before, right? And as we worked with companies, we realized that somebody has to build that software mm -hmm. for that use case. And we ended up being the people who built that software. And that's how our company really evolved and became a software company, you know? So, yeah. and we super excited to share all that body of software, you know, uh, with the community. Yeah. Really great. great. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. For joining us and for your session and have a, have a great day.